Good, after, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to uh, start, this, start this hearing. It's now five past or six past uh, six. Could I ask you all to rise with me and recite the uh, Pledge of the Flag? Thank you very much. Just so you know what's going on here, you see these, you see these little, they, they look like dots from, from, from the candy store. Uh, I'm going to be running the machine. So forgive me if I hit it wrong. Uh, it's not my forte, but I'll do the best I can. We have a, uh, uh, a three minute rule uh, where, where uh, when, when it comes to that time, You'll get a notification that, you know, wrap it up if you can, and uh, we'll move forward from there. In the meanwhile, um, we are, can I have the uh, roll call? Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Peter B. Present. Thank you. Commissioner John Reinhardt. Present. Commissioner Maureen Fitzgerald. Present. Commissioner Christopher Devane. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Eric Millett. Present. Commissioner David Mejias. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Jared Cashow. Present. Commissioner Andrea Wyatt. Commissioner James Megan Jr. Present. Commissioner Michael Pernick. Present. Uh, Chairman Frank Maroney. We have a quorum, sir. If anyone is interested in speaking at this, this evening's event, uh, right over here on my right, your left, you'll see the, uh, the table where Michael Pulitzer is seated. He's the clerk of the county legislature. So if you want to speak and you want, you want to get on the list, Please go over there and sign in, okay? In the meanwhile, um, in each of these proceedings, I have uh, taken the opportunity to put some thoughts on paper. Uh, those of you who've been here on multiple occasions, and there are a few of you that I, I recognize, uh, will recognize some of the things that I'm saying so that uh, we can all work, work from the same page. First, I want to thank Tom Al Alfano for subbing for me last week. He did a heck of a job under, under difficult cir circumstances. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the sixth public hearing of the Temporary Redistricting Advisory Commission. This is an opportunity for the residents and taxpayers to suggest and to tell the commissioners what they want to have and what they want to see in their maps. There will be additional opportunities for the public to have input into this process. To date, the members of both the Republican and Democratic delegations have heard from approximately 95 speakers with varying requests to keep various com communities together. I trust that the, uh, that the public, uh, public attendees and those streaming this, watching, watching this through stream, uh, we are free to share your ideas. Uh, we are open to uh, receiving emails and the like. The commission, Mr. McKenna, you're out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. Don't you want to know? I, I, you'd be surprised when I know. You're out of order. Now, if I could, if I could, I hope that's not on the record. Thank you. Um, the commission consists of 11 members with a non-voting chair being appointed by the county executives. There are five members appointed by the presiding officer and five by the minority leader. The commission permits but does not require public hearings. The priory apportionment processes established the tradition that, that these hearings will be happen on a regular basis. The county legislature has allocated $985,000 to fund the work of the commission. The allocation is divided equally between the commissioners uh, both appointed by the presiding officer and the minority leader. However, a portion of the $985,000 is set aside for, for services such as 
Cinegraphic Services, American Sign Language Interpreters, and Spanish-speaking interpreters. Each delegation of appointees uh, share, uh, shares the balance equally for the purchase of, of the needed mapping technology, software, and hiring experts, and council and other staff that they may choose to, to uh, deem necessary. In developing the map or maps, the Commission must comply with both federal and state law. Uh, the proceedings have to be fair and transparent to the public. The transparency is achieved by significant outreach to the public and holding public hearings on any maps or maps or plans for redistricting that may be submitted to the county legislature by these commissioners and others, or others. Once maps and, or, or plans are drawn, there will be an opportunity for the public to see and give an opinion as to the work product. We are looking, for, uh, looking forward to a, a full hearing in early November at a date to be determined. The, up, uh, the updated website will uh, act as a link to any and all maps that may be presented by either the commissioner or anyone else, by any commissioner or anyone else. Thereafter, the, any map or maps are turned over to the legislature. Likewise, all the transcripts and public comment that are generated by, the, by these hearings from the TDAC uh, will also be resent over. There will also be an opportunity after this, these hearings close for input. Uh, and that date will be, will be announced as and when we get to the last hearing. Um, the full legislature will conduct public hearings on submissions by the legislative committee, uh, then the entire legislature. The goal of the temporary redistricting commission is to have the, our process complete, in, at, complete its hearing so that the legislature has adequate time to review any submissions of maps uh, and conduct its hearings. The county legislature may reject, adopt, revise or amend the redistricting plan or plans recommended by the Temporary District Advisory Commission or adopt any other redistricting plan that meets all constitutional, federal, and state statutory requirements. In an effort to achieve transparency, all the meetings uh, will, will be public and streamed over the Internet, which I believe I've said earlier, uh, and the legislative clerk will preserve those records. Further, the, this commission will stream the hearings and keep the record open for a period of time if, uh, once these are completed, which has also been, been referenced. It will include the submissions, including emails and a correspondence received prior to the date of the, uh, the, that the commission record is closed. Nonetheless, any correspondence or email or information received after that date will also be forwarded to the full legislature for its consideration. In preparation uh, for this hearing, the note a notice of meeting and others were sent to the following. The Office of the County Executive, all county legislators, members of the Minority Commission and Delegation, members of the Majority Commission Delegation, Nassau County League of Women Voters, the City of Glen Cove, the City of Long Beach, Town of Hempstead, Town of North Hempstead, the Town of Oyster Bay, 22 villages in the town of Hempstead, 30 villages in the town of North Hempstead, 16 villages in the town of Oyster Bay, 55 libraries, 57 school districts, 67 civic associations, 50 chambers of commerce, and approximately 150 news and other media outlets that serve Nassau County. There are, will be additional hearings, there are additional hearings scheduled for October 20th at the Albany Avenue Community Center and the Elmont Memorial Library on the 26th of October. With that, I'm going to call upon our first speaker. But Mr. Chairman, if I may. Sure. Um, we do have serious concerns at the silence of the Republican delegation and the disregard they've had that, that demonstrated for the integrity of this process. First, at the last meeting, we pro proposed that in the spirit of transparency, that both delegations disclose any experts they have contracted to analyze and develop maps. The Republican delegation to date still claims they have not contracted any experts and have no one working to analyze or develop maps. Assuming that they are being transparent in that claim, this is even more concerning as it shows that they either counting on the Republican controlled legislature to develop the maps and choose their voters rather than their voters choosing them and choose what district lines they want to run in, or it's a clear neglect of their responsibilities to the public. 
the Democratic delegation has disclosed their experts and initial findings to the public, and we put the, our initial reports and findings into the record from both Dr. Daniel Magleby and our, uh, demograph uh, our expert on demography, Dr. Megan Gall. Secondly, as it is now October 18th, at the onset of this process, the Democratic delegation had proposed a resolution that both delegations put forth their proposed maps by October 14th, four days ago. Not only did the Republican delegation vote down the resolution, but they continue to propose the maps are released the same day they will be submitted to the Nassau County Legislature. This is, an in, this is unacceptable and an insult to the process and the people, as it gives the people of Nassau County zero time to review the maps and put any concerns or questions they may have on the record. Our experts, Dr. Magleby and Dr. Gold, reports had two key findings that should cause alarm and show the seriousness of the redistricting process and the threat of the current maps. Our first expert, Dr. Daniel Magleby, has determined that the current county legislative map is an extreme partisan gerrymander which violates New York state law. In other words, we need to start from scratch with our new maps. Moreover, our demographer and expert, Dr. Megan Gall, has made a preliminary determination that there is substantial evidence that the current map and any new map adapted by, the Nassau, County, by Nassau County that is similar to the current map violates both federal and state voting rights acts and illegally dilutes the voting rights of members of the minority community. What does this mean? The current maps are completely legally invalid and must be scrapped. We must start fresh with completely new maps. If we do not, the maps we propose at the county legislature will be illegal and the commission will violate its duty under the county charter to properly uh, propose legally compliant maps. The last meeting, we attempted to show a PowerPoint to the public in order to educate the public better on the redistricting process. We were thwarted and not allowed to uh, present our PowerPoint. However, we did hand out the PowerPoint deck to the public, uh, and we do have copies of that deck tonight, which we'll hand out to the public, which is already put into the record. And I just I would ask our Democratic staff to hand out to the public anybody that wants a copy of the PowerPoint, which talks about what the redistricting process is and, and what our responsibilities here uh, of this commission are. Since the current maps are illegal and, and must be scrapped, we must start fresh with completely new maps. If we do not, uh, there is a serious threat that the maps and the new legislative districts would not only be illegal, but members of minority communities will be underrepresented in government. So I would ask you to look at the uh, PowerPoint that we presented uh, last week in Freeport, because redistricting can be confusing. Naturally, many of the people in this room tonight are not familiar with the legal process of redrawing legislative districts. Uh, and I will ask that uh, if you have any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. Uh, and you know, when we did try to present the PowerPoint at the meeting last week, you know, the five Democratic commissioners all walked out on the public uh, in an illegal recess. The five Republican commissioners uh, all walked out uh, in an illegal recess, despite the public's outcry to see the presentation. So what you're going to have here today is a copy of the presentation. I'm still not really sure why uh, the Republican delegation didn't want to provide the public with as much information as possible, but I will draw your attention to the uh, PowerPoint that we've handed out today so that you can familiarize yourself a little bit more with what uh, the process is. And having said that, I will turn it over to Jared Cashow, my fellow commissioner. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, uh, Dave. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to go into uh, uh, to, to repeat uh, much of what uh, Commissioner Mejia said, but uh, the one thing that stands out in my mind that bears repeating, and it's something I've repeated at every meeting uh, to, the, to date, is uh, with respect to the opportunity for the public to review draft proposed maps that are put together by this body. As it stands now, uh, as, as the ch chairman had mentioned, uh, they're planning on having a, a the, the maps put together and as it stands, one a matter of hours between the maps, the time that those maps are published and the times that they're transmitted to uh, the county legislature. Uh, as Commissioner Mejia had just mentioned, redistricting is a very complex process. It requires expert analysis. 
there is absolutely no way that the public can have an opportunity to meaningfully review, review those maps and experts have an opportunity to review those maps before they're transmitted to the legislature. I've gone on on multiple occasions uh, about our efforts to have uh, the, an agreement with uh, my colleagues on the other side of the table with respect to producing maps at least one week in advance of those maps being transmitted to the legislature to no avail. And it's, it's extremely frustrating. I think we're doing the public a great disservice by trying to compress uh, the amount of time within which the maps are, are transmitted, uh, published and then transmitted to the legislature. I strongly believe, as I, my colleagues do, that those maps should be vetted carefully by not only this commission and the experts that we've engaged, but also by all of you. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll pass uh, my time over to Commissioner Pernick. Thank you very much. As Commissioner Mejias referenced in his initial comments, the members of the Democratic delegation have retained two experts who have been doing objective, nonpartisan analysis of the current map to inform our process. They've prepared preliminary reports, which we've submitted into the record, um, and you could find them online. They are not on the official website, uh, but they are on a shared drive that the Democratic members have made available to the public. A link to that shared drive is included in the PowerPoint presentation, so you can go ahead and look at the two expert reports that have been submitted to this commission by uh, uh, the Democratic members. The takeaway from the first report submitted by Dr. Daniel Magobi is extremely important. As Commissioner Mejia said, he concluded that the current map and any new map adapted by, adopted by Nassau County that is similar to the current map is an illegal partisan gerrymander. The results of his analysis leave no room for doubt on that point. And this is important because the laws have changed over the last 10 years. The municipal home rule law now has a provision uh, that provides, and I, I quote, districts shall not be drawn to discourage competition or to favor or disfavor incumbents or other particular candidates or political parties. We know the methodologies that courts will look at when evaluating whether that standard has been met, has been complied with, and we know that the current map fails, and any map that bears significant resemblance to the current map would fail. How did Dr. Mackleby do this? Well, it's pretty simple. He uses a computer simulation to generate 10,000 random maps that comply with the requirements under the law. And he measures the outcome of the map that's being evaluated against those 10,000 maps. And what did he conclude? The current Nassau County legislative map has more bias in favor of Republicans and against Democrats than all 10,000 random simulated maps. That's evidence that courts across the country would look to that the map is an illegal partisan gerrymander. So his report officially places this commission, officially places Nassau County on notice that if we don't start from scratch, if we use that map as a starting point, we will be in violation of the municipal home rule law's prohibition on partisan gerrymandering. The second report submitted by Dr. Megan Gall um, is a preliminary assessment of whether the map complies with the Federal Voting Rights Act and the State Voting Rights Act. These are incredibly important laws designed to protect communities of color against racial discrimination in voting. The takeaway from her assessment is also really simple and incredibly important. There is substantial evidence that the current map and any map adapt adopted by Nassau County that is similar to the current map would violate the federal and the state Voting Rights Act. Um, and how did she do this analysis? Well, it's, again, pretty straightforward. She walked through the uh, uh, preconditions, the standards laid out by the United States Supreme Court. She walked through the methodology that is in the New York State um, uh, uh, Voting Rights Act um, and concluded that there is an obligation it's possible to draw a map with five majority minority districts, and there's therefore an obligation to draw a map in which voters of color have an opportunity to elect candidates of their choice in at least five districts. The current map was drawn with only three majority minority districts. In the last 10 years, because of the growth of the minority community in Nassau County, there are now four districts, uh, but, but she has confirmed that it's possible and, in fact, required to draw five 
So any map that doesn't achieve that goal, uh, we're concerned, would very likely violate the Federal Voting Rights Act and the State Voting Rights Act. So what does this mean? This also puts us on notice. It puts this commission and it puts Nassau County on notice that we have an obligation to comply with the Federal and State Voting Rights Act. And if we have a map that looks anything like the current map, we're probably going to violate those statutes. Uh, so we have an opportunity to fix those violations now. Um, I know that uh, my colleagues on the Democratic side are committed to doing so, and I hope we can work collaboratively with our colleagues on the Republican side to work together to develop a map that complies with all of these requirements that can earn six votes so we can send that to the legislature for a recommendation. Thank you. Dave? We have repeatedly expressed our concerns about the grave deficiencies in the Republican delegation's approach to the redistricting process so far, and we continue to have those concerns. We appreciate all the public input to date and look forward to hearing from you today. Thank you for your time. Mr. Chairman? Y yes, Mr. P. Mr. B. Yeah, I, I'd just like to note that I do agree that we seem to have different approaches to the process. My understanding is that we are here to hear from the public. Thus far, we have now spent 20 minutes hearing from the Democratic delegation that their lawyer has told them that a 10-year-old map is illegal. Well, we're here to draw a new map. And the first step in that process, we think, is to hear from the public as to how they would like the new map to look. That being said, I request that you call upon the first speaker. Yes, uh, Karen Moskowitz. Good evening. I think it's on? Yes. My name is Karen Moskowitz, co-chair of the Nassau League of Women Voters Redistricting Committee. The League is a nonpartisan, grassroots nonprofit, encouraging informed and active participation in our democracy. The League takes position on a variety of public policy issues, but never supports or opposes any political party or candidate. As it has at all earlier public meetings of the Commission, we're here to advocate on behalf of the transparent and inclusive redistricting process. Once again, we remind you that redistricting is foundational to the right to vote and that the public must be able to observe the work of the commission. But to date, we've wit what we've witnessed is an opaque procedure. I can do this. Firstly, with respect to the current process, repeated requests for, the, for an inclusive process in statements to the commission made by both the league and the public have fallen on deaf ears. There are few public meetings and working, working and mapping meetings, if there are any, are held outside the public view. An expanded calendar of public meetings could easily continue into December and still allow the Commission ample time to draw its proposed maps and meet the submit, submission deadline to the legislature. Despite claims that public meetings are broadly publicized, the public must work to find meeting details. On the official Commission website, Details of future meetings aren't posted in a timely manner or require layers of click-through to access. Full meeting information is, however, readily available on the Democratic delegation's shared drive. Dates and venues must be publicized with ample notice in the county clerk's officially designated newspapers. Provisions still have not been made for those who are physically challenged, despite the fact that county legislature and commission meeting notices clearly state, quote, the Nassau County Legislature is committed to making its public meetings accessible to individuals with disabilities and every reasonable accommodation will be made so that they can participate. By holding no meetings virtually, the physically challenged are unable to, to, to participate in real time with live oral statements or by responding to questions posed by commissioners. Secondly, the current plan is for the Commission to introduce proposed maps at 5 p.m. on November 10 and submit them to the Legislature three and a half hours later. This effectively eliminates the public's ability to analyze and respond to the maps prior to their submission to the legislature. It also means the commission has no intention of holding public hearings to enable the community to express whether the maps meet their expectations. The State Independent Redistricting Commission held a second round of public hearings after the release of its proposed maps. And the court, hearing the harkin Rider versus Hochul litigation, allowed a window of public comment on the Congressional and New York Senate maps proposed by its court-appointed special master. The county charter gives the commission until January 7, 2023 to submit their mapping plan. The accelerated November 10 timing demonstrates gross disrespect for the public and is an obvious attempt to bypass community input. The county's redistricting process has been opaque and the lack of responsiveness from the commission on concerns raised show little regard for interests of its residents. 
The League has suggested remedies so that communities of interest can be fairly served by the Commission's mapping plan. Let's make the effort necessary for a fair redistricting process. Thank you. Ms. Moskowitz, I, if I may, um, I, I first want to thank you for coming. I know that you and other leaders in the League have been deeply involved in this process. Uh, I, I am grateful for that, and I know some of, some of the individuals up here are, are truly grateful for the involvement, the guidance, the testimony from the League throughout this process. Um, I, I want to elevate uh, two of the points that you have raised. First, virtual meetings. Um, I, I think you make a very important point that virtual meetings would be uh, uh, essential for many members of our community who cannot come out on a weekday evening to participate in person, who may not be able to come to in-person meetings at all. And having virtual meetings is, is a critical step. We proposed, I, I introduced a resolution at the outset of this process calling for at least two virtual meetings, one before maps were introduced and one after maps were introduced so that members of the public would have that opportunity. I do hope that's something that we can reconsider um, in light of the advocacy from the League uh, on, on that point. Um, second, I, I think it's worth uh, uh, elevating the important point you raised overlooking what's happened in the state process. Even with the compressed timeline, even with the litigation, even with all of the challenges that had plagued the state redistricting process, they were still able to have not only a, a full set of hearings of the commission after draft maps had been introduced, but a set of hearings in an extremely compressed judicial schedule where there was a week for members of the public to weigh in and participate on proposed maps uh, and have their voices heard. So, so I think it's really important, the point that you raise, that, that there's no good excuse for denying the public this opportunity to, to comment, to weigh in and propose maps. And, and may I just say, with respect to Harkin Ryder versus Hochul, the public was given a mere three days to respond. They either had to send an email something or, or drive up or fly up to Bath, New York. In that short amount of time, 3,000 public comments were received. And the special master actually took, so, uh, took them into account and in a point of fact, did respond to something the Nassau uh, League of Women Voters had suggested with respect to how Long Island is uh, oriented, but 3,000 comments in three days. Uh, absolutely. Well, that, that again speaks to the uh, uh, role of, of uh, and, and the, the impact that something like that can have. So, I, I mean, ba based on your testimony to this commission, um, I, I would at this point like to make a motion for uh, this commission to hold uh, at least one fully virtual hearing in addition to any other hearings that are scheduled for us to hold that after draft maps are released but before a vote is held uh, so that members of the public will have that opportunity uh, to do exactly what the League has been recommending to, to participate virtually and have their voices heard in that, in that mechanism. Um, so I'll, I'll make that motion at this time. And if, I'm, if it's Second. unclear, happy to restate it. Second. On, I'm on the motion. And I'll make a Mr. motion Mr. for a roll call Mr. vote. Mr. Mr. Pernick, on, on that issue, at least two weeks ago, <clears throat> Mr. Mejias was sent an email together with uh, Mr. Kleins, and I don't know who else was on it, requesting whether or not we could set up a, a virtual hearing. So there's no reason um, that I can see why we can't agree to that. That is something that we, that's been on the table. It has not been, we have not been answered. We don't know where you stand on it. We know where you stand on it, and I'm assuming that it's going to get a positive vote on, a, on the part of, uh, of the, uh, uh, Mr. Mejias, um, and I don't, I don't think there's any objection to that. However, um, that's all I have to say. Okay. Um, my, my understanding is that the proposal was not to hold a virtual meeting um, after maps were released. My, my motion is for us to commit as a commission to hold one virtual meeting after maps are, are released, um, and not have that replace another meeting, um, but have a standalone additional virtual meeting that we schedule after maps are released. That's the motion that's on the table. As to the motion, I don't know why you're afraid to turn this over to the Nick County Legislature. I mean, there's, there's certainly uh, competent people, competent people in this audience who, who, can, who can figure out how to do that. You guys just want this thing to go on forever. Uh, I don't know why. But that's, that's the reality. That makes no sense whatsoever. We have, a, we have time right now to do, to do a virtual meeting. 
It's been requested by the League of Women Voters. We you have, have not agreed to send anything back to us. It's laid out there, as frequently happens. And, uh, and you know, on, on another issue, or uh, this, uh, this issue, it seems that at every, at every one of these meetings, instead of listening to people, a little ambush takes place. Two meetings ago, the day before the meeting was held, we received a, a request and for a resolution the following day. That's not providing, providing anybody with a lot of notice. That's an ambush. Last week, PowerPoint, and all it was asked, tell us what's in it, show it. We have no idea what you had in it. Yet, a second ambush accounts. And here we are today, a third ambush. We keep on, we keep on up in the ante to keep this, keep this party going. When it's time, to, when it's time to, to finish up, we're going to finish up. So that's all I have to say on it. Well, I mean, since we're, so first of all, to, just to make the record clear, my understanding is that you wanted to make the last meeting uh, virtual, which we want a virtual meeting in addition to the meetings that are already scheduled. Second of all, I think it's ironic that you think it's an ambush that you didn't get our PowerPoint in time for the meeting a day or two before, but you want to give the entire county an hour to consider the maps that could determine who represents them for the next 10 years. So the only ambush happening here is coming from the, Redel from the Republican delegation on the people of Nassau County. I don't understand why we can't give the people a week or two to look at the maps. Everybody works hard. Maybe you can't take off of work on November 10th to look at the maps of the hour and quickly tell us what you think. Maybe we, you know, why can't we give people time? to look at these maps, to analyze what we come up with. Why can't you tell us who's drawing your maps? You have, uh, I, I'm sure, you know, it, you have a lot of faith in the Nassau County Legislature when you look at how gerrymandered the presiding officer's own district is. The presiding officer's district is illegal. It's illegal. And he is in charge of the redistricting process, and he will determine what the maps look like. He's going to determine what his district looks like so he can preserve his own power, and he's going to determine who who his voters are, not that the voters are going to determine who their elected official is. So if it's too much to ask to give the people more than an hour, don't complain that we didn't give you your PowerPoint a few days in advance, and the PowerPoint was just informing the public about the process. So if you want to talk about ambushes, maybe we should stop ambushing the people in Nassau County. Call the roll on the motion. Mr. Chairman, it's my understanding the motion calls for an additional hearing post map to be done by Zoom. And while I would encourage the chair uh, to arrange for uh, Zoom to be available at one or more of our next meetings, if it's technologically feasible to do so, uh, I, I'm going to vote against this particular motion. I've repeatedly said that I'm not. Uh, at this point in time, not ready to commit to additional hearing dates. So for that reason, I will vote no on the motion. Commissioner John Reinhardt. No. Commissioner Maureen Fitzgerald. No. Commissioner Christopher Devane. No. Commissioner Eric Millett. No. Commissioner David Mejia. Yes. Commissioner Jared Cashow. I believe this body has a much more important role than my colleagues on the Republican side seem to. Um, the legislature saw fit to create this uh, temporary district advisory commission so that we can take meaningful testimony, which means informed testimony from the public, uh, get as much feedback as we can with respect to actual draft proposed maps, and then provide informed uh, analysis to the legislature so that it can make its decision. I don't believe that we're here just to listen to the public speak, and that's it. We have an actual role to play, and uh, I believe that we're not doing it right now. Uh, so I vote ye yes or aye on the motion. Thank you. Commissioner Andrina Wyatt. She is absent. Commissioner James Megan. I vote yes. Commissioner Michael Pernick. Vote yes. Announce the results. The results are 
Five no's, four yes, one absent. The motion fails. Now, before I move on to the, uh, the next speaker, if any of you are here wish to have, wish to have uh, your statement put on record, we have Mr. Pulitzer over here who uh, you can fill out the sheet so that we know where you're from, we know what's going on, and uh, please go over because we have very few speakers. Next is Dan Oppenheimer. Mr. Dapper, uh, before you begin, I, I know you didn't have your address down on here. Uh, maybe when you're finished with your presentation, you can uh, sure. fill, fill it out with Mr. Pulitzer. Be happy to. Dan Oppenheimer, I'm a resident of the village of Hempstead. Uh, first of all, thank you uh, to Mr. Pernick and the members of the uh, Democratic Commission uh, for providing the shared drive. I was able to access that today. Uh, if any of you have had a chance to look at it, I would recommend it. I just got a very quick uh, overview of it. Uh, from what I could see, it included the population of all 19 districts. Have you had a chance to look at it? I haven't been graced with a copy of it, so I can't speak to that. Okay. I'm sure they could arrange that. Um, just as a, uh, again, I. I can't uh, verify all of the information on there, so I'm not really going to speak about the drive, but it seems to me that that really is the substantial uh, information that the public needs to help us with our opinions. As you referenced, uh, all of us have opinions, Republican opinions, Democratic opinions, independent opinions. The more information and data that we have to base these opinions on, to me, is the crux of the, the matter with this. Uh, I wanted to use some of my time to read a portion of a story that was in Newsday, uh, published yesterday. And the headline is, Mineola Mayor and Republican North Hempstead Council Members Sue the Town Over New District Lines. And the story goes in part, the mayor of Mineola Village along with two Republican North Hempstead Council members, have filed a federal complaint against the town of North Hempstead asking a judge to invalidate the recently adopted redistricting map as unconstitutional. The complaint cites concerns that the new lines redrawn in accordance with the 2020 census favor Democrats in future elections and diminishes the power of certain voters in the town. Now that sounded familiar to me, uh, Fred Brewington, uh, one or two meetings ago, made reference to there may be a lawsuit uh, following this procedure. Um, I really hope that you're not wasting your time and that it's just leading to a lawsuit regardless of what decision you come to. And I certainly hope you're not wasting our time. Uh, I traveled you know, a little bit to get here. Many people have done the same for an, a number of meetings. If all that is going to happen from this is a lawsuit uh, with a lot of lawyers getting paid a lot of money to uh, figure out the result and a judge somewhere who also may not be uh, technologically advanced enough to study the district but has to make a decision, I, I would say that would have been a tremendous waste of time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oppenheimer. Kevin McKenna. Kevin McKenna, Syosset, New York. Mr. Maroney, um, or Mr. B, I'm not sure who it was, but you had a talked about the fact that almost one million dollars has been allocated towards this committee. Is that correct? I think it was nine hundred and ninety three thousand dollars. Nine hundred and eighty five thousand. Okay. I'd like to ask um, it's posted up on the Nassau County uh, website um, if you spend some time and and you you can find it um, I'm not sure how senior citizens, I'm not sure how many people um, have access to 
to anything uh, if they don't use a computer or, or whatever. I mean, the Republican Party, you could send out millions and millions of dollars worth of mailers, but you can't send out a mailer to, to, to residents, especially seniors, letting, letting them know about the importance of these hearings. But on your Nassau County website, you list out the names of all the committee members. And you also, right below it, you also post the names of two individuals that you call co-executive directors. One of them is um, Elspeth Kashignano, who I, I don't know whether she's ever present at these meetings. And the other Stand one is up, right Elizabeth. I'm sorry? She's over there. Oh, she is, okay. I, I would think that um, out of professionalism, in the beginning, I would think that you would introduce all the people that are involved in this committee. And the other one is Rachel Whitmore, who sits over hidden behind the, the desk over there. My question is, um, are the co-executive, and, and Mr. Maroney, I thank you for finally answering my email. Um, I had to send about five emails to you trying to understand the purpose of the co-executive directors, and your answer to me was, in a line or two, they assist the board. I have a couple of questions. Um, the, bat, the last part of that sentence was left out, and that says, with the daily operations of the commission. Okay. So my question is, do those two individuals, um, do, they, do they talk during this process? Do they work together to try to, um, in other words, let me give you an example. The last meeting, which was in Freeport, it was pouring, pouring rain. And the parking lot was to the left of the building, and people were getting out of their car, going to a door that was locked, and there were no signs to even explain to the public which door to, so do the co-executive directors, is it, a, is it a function of theirs to try to um, educate the public as to, what's the purpose, I mean, in, in some detail, but my real question is, I'd like you to tell me and tell us if they work together to try to make this process good. Um, but my question is, do they get paid? Yes. They do get paid. Okay, I'd like to go on the record right now. Before you, before you continue, your three minutes are up. If you can wrap up, it'll be appreciated. Thank sure. Um, they do get paid. Could you tell us how much they get out of that? I'm candid with you. I don't know any, any of the salaries on it at all. I would like to go on the record you that can call, you can call and file a, 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 a okay. I'd, I'd like. Well, you, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna withhold what I was just about to say. Um, I think there's a, a severe conflict of interest with both individuals in the positions that they hold, getting paid for this co-executive situation. Could you just tell me, do they work together? Do they work together? Do they talk? Of course they do. Now, hey, can you wrap it up, please? Now you're, you're now about a okay. minute past. In closing, thank you for the courtesy of just a few extra seconds. At the last meeting, or the meeting before, I explained to everybody about the three legislators in Hicksville, about how crazy it is to have three legislators in Hicksville. Well, guess what? I found out today that there's actually four legislators in Hicksville now because of the recent redrawing legis I don't know whether you guys know this. I'm told that legislator Celia Bino, who's on the Democratic side of the ledge, that her district that was recently redrawn goes into a certain part of Hicksville. So now, now Hicksville has four legislators. That's what I'm told. And he's shaking his head yes, and, and the co-executive director who's behind the desk over there, she's also concurring. Um, Mr. Thank Mr. you very much for your time. And um, as the last speaker said, I, I hope that you save the taxpayers' money on a future lawsuit uh, because we've had enough of you wasting our money. 
Thank you very much. Thank you for your thoughts. I just, uh, uh, I just want to just state for the record, at every meeting, I, I've missed one meeting, but at every meeting that I have been at, Ms. Kashigano has been here as well. So I just want to put that on the record. I, th I, I think that the, uh, any disagreements we may have uh, amongst ourselves on the dais, I think everybody up here is acting in goodwill. And I, I know that, uh, uh, that- And unpaid. Our, <laughs> and when, that's another point in favor. Um, but I do know how hard the, uh, the, the, the staff works because they are really keep the thing buzzing along. That said, uh, Stephanie Chase. Hello, good evening. Glad to see you're feeling better. Thank you very much for saying it, and I appreciate that. Okay. Um, as far as um, transparency, um, I've been to all meetings but one, and so far, overwhelmingly, everyone has said the same thing, the public, um, that we'd like to see the maps at least two weeks before um, they're turned over. And um, we just hope that you're listening to us. Um, it's been the same thing all the meetings I've gone to. It's the same thoughts from the public. So um, it's more aligned with this side of the uh, dais. So I hope you're listening. I hope you'll take what we say uh, and we are not going into uh, litigation or whatever you guys call it and, and, and going and wasting money because if you're listening and you wanted the uh, public's input, that's what they've said and also uh, an extra district to represent us properly. Um, as far as you say that they ramble on, but if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't know what, I wouldn't know which way was up. I really wouldn't. They explain it very in late, where anybody can understand, because otherwise I would not have known, and I wouldn't have traveled all the way from Rockville Center to get here, because I feel it's that important. So um, I hope you take it into consideration and you listen. You listen to the public, they're telling you. Every meeting I've gone to, they're saying the same things. Thank you. Mrs. Chase, before you leave, I have a question for you. you yes. You, uh, you're from, uh, uh, what village did you say? Around? I'm from Lakeview Rockville Center section. Okay. And uh, who, who is your representative? Um, right now it's uh, Taylor, you're talking about Taylor Darling and? I'm talking about the, uh, your county legislator. Oh, it's uh, Bino, Sheila Bino. Okay. Uh, have you heard anything about her uh, map being drawn out of a district? I didn't hear yet about that, no. Okay, nor have I. And I don't know if anybody else says it the dais either, but. Well, that no doesn't idea mean, that you know, it's just. Just that curious. I've been, I've been I, really I know, busy today. I know trying Sheila to do very well. She's a, she's a fine legislator. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, that concludes all the speakers who've signed up. Is there anybody left in the audience who wishes to make a statement? If not, I want to want to thank the uh, uh, the Glen Cove Police Department as well as the Nassau County Police Department for their presence here today. Uh, thank you very much for being here, and uh, thank you all for coming out and uh, participating. I'd just like to thank the City of Glen Cove as well, and the City of Glen Cove staff, uh, the Mayor, and the uh, the Council members for helping us arrange a meeting here in, in City Hall and uh, letting us use their, uh, their, their chairs for the night. Your three minutes are up. Thank you. <laughs> Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye.